In Raising Robots, you'll play as a young inventor trying to make your mark on the world of robotics. This is an engine building or tableau building game for one to six players published by Navu Games. Thanks to them for sponsoring this video. You'll collect and spend resources to build robots and upgrades to earn points that represent your reputation as a robotics expert. After eight rounds, whoever has the most points wins and gets recognized as a master inventor. Each of the eight rounds has five possible phases, but you have to choose each round which phases you'll activate and how much energy each one will get. Then you'll move your meeple clockwise through the phases you picked and do actions within each based on the energy level. I'll go into detail on every phase and how you choose your phases and energy levels later, but broadly speaking, the upgrade phase lets you unlock these bonuses around your board, the assemble phase lets you play robot cards in these three rows, and the design, fabricate, and recycle phases give you different types of resources, cards, batteries, and points. Whenever you activate one of these phases, you also get a chance to use each robot that you've built in that row. Every action has an energy requirement on the left and rewards on the right. In this case, you need one energy and get one program, a type of resource. Some actions also have a cost, which is indicated by an arrow like this. So here you can choose to spend a battery to gain a duct tape. Whenever you see a slash, that means you get a choice, in this case, either a microchip or a gear. I'll cover all the phases in detail, but first let's talk about how you win. There are four ways to earn points, and they're always shown with a pink star. You can use the scorekeeping pad to keep track. So first, every robot card you build is worth points, between three and six. So in this example, your nine robots would earn 36 points. Then second, these class cards give you bonus points for accomplishing certain targets. I'll cover class cards in more detail later, but for this example, you have three and get a total of 31 points from them. Next, you can collect points throughout the game with certain actions on your board or on robot cards. And you'll track those points by moving these stars in your inventory. Use the big star every time you pass 10. So this is 21 points. And last, there are five types of resources you can collect and spend throughout the game. Programs, microchips, gears, sensors, and duct tape, which acts as a wild. You'll also collect batteries, which can be used to temporarily boost your energy levels, and a hand of robot cards. At the end of the game, every three unspent items is worth a point. So in this example, you have eight batteries, three programs, and two cards. That's 13 total, so divide by three and round down to get four points, giving you a total score of 92. So let's talk about how each round works, then I'll cover class cards and the initial setup. To start off every round, everyone needs to decide which phases they're going to give power to. Every player has an identical deck of eight energy cards and five phase cards. Each round, you'll reveal the next two cards from your energy deck and add these energy cubes from the supply onto any card that shows it should have them. Then secretly choose two phases to match up with those energy levels. Once everyone's ready, reveal the phases you picked. In this example, you chose to play the design phase with three energy and upgrade with four energy and two cubes. Those energy cubes go onto the central board and power up that phase for everybody. So by picking those high energy phases, you also help the other players. So in this example with three players, you and I both added energy cubes to upgrade and I also added one to fabricate. That means you'll get a total of seven energy for the upgrade phase, three for design, and you'll get to run fabricate with one energy, even though you didn't pick it with your cards. When you see an energy card with this on it, that doesn't add any cubes to the center, but it means all cubes that do get added to that phase count double for you. So this player would get four total energy for the fabricate phase. At the beginning of any phase, you can also spend any number of batteries from your inventory to boost your energy level, and most phases also have a possible upgrade that will boost your energy every time you do that phase. But you can only use those upgrade and battery boosts if the phase is getting at least some energy from your cards or the shared cubes to start with. Once the round has been set up, everyone goes through it simultaneously, and you can go at your own pace. Just move your meeple clockwise through the phases you have energy for, and when you're done, move back to the start so you can see when everyone's ready for the next round. So let's cover each of the five phases. First, is upgrade. This phase lets you unlock these upgrade tokens around your board and add them to your inventory. You pay for each upgrade using a combination of energy and resources, and there are four choices for how those can combine. This symbol means any type of resource or a robot card from your hand. 
So for example, if you had five energy for this phase, you could take this action and spend any two resources or cards to unlock one upgrade. But this icon is a reminder that for this phase, you can also split up your available energy however you want to unlock multiple upgrades. You can even take the same action multiple times here. So for example, with five energy again, you could spend a battery to boost it to six, then take this action twice, spending six resources or cards to unlock two upgrades. There's no limit except what you can afford. There are three different kinds of benefits that unlocking an upgrade can give you. These ones give you an energy boost whenever you run that phase. These ones will give you an extra benefit of some sort whenever you take each of these actions. And these ones just give you a one-time benefit called inspiration. That means you can either take three new class cards and choose one to keep, take two resources or cards of your choice, or take four batteries. Keep in mind, when you're gaining things with this symbol, you can't take duct tape. And if you take multiple inspiration during the game, you are allowed to choose the same benefit if you want. Once you have an upgrade token in your inventory, you can add it at any time onto a card to make that card more powerful. I'll show that in detail later, but the upgrades come in four types with different colors and symbols, and that limits where they can be played down. It also tends to match up with the kinds of effects they'll have. The assemble phase is where you spend energy and resources to build robots from your hand. There's just one action here, but you can split up your energy, just like the upgrade phase, to take this action as many times as you want. The cost to build each robot is in the top left, and every robot has two different ways you can pay for it. One option that costs more resources and less energy, and one that's more energy and less resources. The top right tells you which row this robot can be built in, recycle in this case, and how many points it's worth. Then the bottom shows you the actions this robot can perform. You always build from the left to the right in each row, and once you get past the first column, every space has an additional cost in resources or cards of your choice that you have to pay in addition to one of the costs on the card. So for example, to build this card, you could pay five energy and three sensors using duct tape if you didn't have enough, then spend any resource or card to cover the additional cost. If you have extra energy after you're done building robots, it just gets wasted. And one quick note, there's no limit on the number of robots you can hold in your hand or the number you can build at once, as long as you have enough energy and resources. But you can only fit five robots in each row, and you can never take back a robot once it's been built. There's also no limit on how many of each item you can have in your inventory. If you get past 10, you can flip the marker over to show that, and it's rare to pass 20, but if you do, just pull out an extra marker from the box or use anything else you have on hand to track it. The point stars do pass 20 pretty often, so for those you have the big star to track 10s. Now, back to the phases. Design, fabricate, and recycle all work the same way. For each of these phases, you start at the top, and you get to take every action up to your energy level. You don't have to split up your energy here, which is why you see these plus icons. So for instance, if you have four energy for design, you could take this action to gain a program, then this action, which is to spend any number of cards and gain that number plus one in return. And with this action, you can choose to spend zero cards to just draw one. Then you'd skip this action to gain a point because you don't have seven energy. The fabricate phase works the same way, but it gives you either a microchip or a gear, and either a gear or a sensor. Recycle gives you two batteries, then you can spend a battery to gain a duct tape. And all these actions can be improved by unlocking their upgrades. After you've taken the actions on a phase, you get a chance to use each robot in that row from left to right. Every robot card has two possible actions, but the second option is only available if you upgrade the robot with a matching token from your inventory. You can add an unlocked upgrade to a card at any time. So in this example, you only have four energy, which isn't enough to run this robot's basic action. But if you have a pink upgrade available, you could unlock the upgrade action, which does the same thing with less energy. Keep in mind that upgrading a card is permanent, and there are only four available upgrades in each color. If both a robot's actions are available, you can choose either one. And if you don't have enough energy for the available actions, you just have to skip that robot. You can also choose to skip any action on a robot or your board for any reason. There's an index on the back of the rulebook with clarifications on every robot and board symbol. 
And there's a link in this video's description to download the rules if you need extra copies or other languages. Keep in mind, the order of things is always strict. So you go clockwise through the phases, skipping any that you don't have energy for, then within each phase you go top to bottom and left to right. So for example, if this robot unlocks an upgrade, you could take it from this phase, but it won't have any effect there until the next time that you run that action. The same applies to these energy boost upgrades, or if you gain batteries during a phase. You can't use those to boost your current energy level because you have to set that level at the beginning of the phase before you start taking actions. But if a later action within the phase has you spend those batteries as a cost, that's fine. Once everyone's done with their powered up phases, just clear away the energy cubes, move the round tracker, discard your used energy cards, and reveal the next two to start your next round. You can choose the same phases or different ones every time. Between rounds four and five, there's what's called the break period. Everyone gets three new class cards and chooses one to keep, and you'll shuffle your deck of eight energy cards to set it up for the second half of the game. So let's talk about class cards, and then you're ready to set up and play. Each class gives you bonus points at the end of the game for collecting a certain thing. For example, this one gives points for collecting batteries. The table in the middle of each class shows the different grade levels available, the number of things you need in order to get each grade, and the number of points that grade is worth. So right now, you have 13 batteries, which would give you a C in energy management, worth 5 points. You can use these arrow tokens to track the grade levels for convenience, but these aren't scored until the end of the game, so that's not required. You can also use these to track whatever else you find helpful. Like, it can be nice to track your energy when a phase gets more complex. There's a wide variety of available classes. They can count different things in your inventory, your played robot cards, or your upgrades. Page 20 in the rulebook shows what every possible objective means, and I recommend you just learn each type as it comes up. We also need to talk about how you use upgrades on class cards. Every class can be upgraded once to give you what's called extra credit, which gives you a one grade boost at the end of the game. For example, this one takes a pink upgrade, and that would mean 13 batteries are now worth a B, which is 9 points. There are also some classes where it's impossible to get an A without extra credit. For example, this one counts how many blue upgrades you've unlocked. But even if you unlock all four of them, that's still only a B, unless you also use a green upgrade here for extra credit to boost it to an A. There's space for your classes here on the left side of your board, and there's a limit that you can only have three. So if you ever have an opportunity to get a fourth class, you'll have to either discard one or just not take a new one. That's everything you need to know. So let's go over how you set up a game, then I'll cover some optional things at the end of the video. First, put out the central board with the round counter and the supply of energy cards, and give each player their own board and a set of tokens, energy, and phase cards. Put your inventory tokens near the tracker and your 16 upgrades on their matching spots around the board. For anyone who's colorblind, you can use the border patterns to match these up. Then every player gets some starting materials, which there's a guide for on each player board. First, everyone gets eight robot cards and chooses five to keep, two class cards, which you choose one of, and two inventor cards, which you choose one of. We haven't talked about inventor cards yet because you can play without them for your first game. So I'll cover those at the end of the video so you can save it for later if you want. But each inventor is a character that gives you special abilities. When you do include them, I recommend that you choose your class and inventor first before looking at your eight robot cards, since taking it all at once can be overwhelming. Once you've chosen your cards, keep the robots in your hand and put the class in this space to the left of your board. And if you're using inventors, they'll go here. Then everyone also gets to build two robots from their hand, unlock one upgrade, and gain three batteries and three duct tape to start off your inventory. For those two robot cards, you don't have to pay the energy or resource costs, but if you play both of them in the same row, you will still have to pay the extra cost to build in the second column. So you could pay that by discarding one of your other robot cards or losing one of your three starter duct tape. The last thing to set up is everyone's energy deck. You play with a deck of eight energy cards, but there are actually 12 in each set. You'll remove four each game based on the number of players, using these numbers at the bottom of each card as a guide. Just find the four cards that don't match your player number. For example, in a five-player game, you'd remove these four. That keeps the number of energy cubes fairly constant no matter how many players you have. 
For one and two player games, you'll also need some extra setup for a system that adds in extra cubes. So check that out in the rulebook if you're playing with just one or two. The last thing to talk about is inventors. Each inventor is totally unique. So there's an inventor explanations sheet for reference with details on how they all work. That sheet also has complexity ratings for each inventor that you can use to pull out just the straightforward ones to use while you're still learning the game. Let's just look at one example. If you're playing as Luis, this symbol means his ability is triggered immediately at the beginning of the game, and it gives you one extra duct tape and also an extra upgrade unlock. Every inventor also has a second power that's unlocked with an upgrade, but there's a condition that has to be met before you're allowed to put an upgrade there. For Luis, the condition is that you need to have four or more robots built on your board. Once that condition is met, you could add one orange upgrade here at any time to instantly get another duct tape and unlock another upgrade. Other inventors have abilities that are ongoing effects or that trigger at the end of the game or every round. And some have a different upgrade condition that they require at least three unlocked upgrades on your board. So you're ready to play. I recommend for your first few rounds, take some time afterwards to have every player talk through what they did. That gives you a chance to see each other's strategies and also keep fresh on the rules. And don't worry if it takes some time before you feel like you understand the basics and start to develop a cohesive strategy. One great thing about this game is since you're only working on your own board, you can just focus on improving your own score every time you play and don't have to worry about the competition. If you do want more competition though, there's an inventor bidding variant that introduces some more aggressive strategy in the setup, and there's a way to do a three game challenge with one player. Play hard and have fun. If you're watching this video soon after it's posted, Raising Robots is crowdfunding on Kickstarter. So I'll put a link in the description to that campaign. And in the future, I'll replace that with a link to where you can buy the game. I'll see you next game night.